as well as that how does the uh how does the mechanic work there like if you're reducing 70 percent damage does dp still get the heal like does she what does she get the full heal like is it based off how much damage she's dealing or is she going to get a percentage based heal just based on how the the actual spirit siphon works i wonder i actually forget the interaction with that um mm. I forget because we've seen that a couple of times. I feel we like have. you do still gain gain HP back, mm. but I can't remember because that's laning phase. The amount you steal isn't that big anyway. So I'm keen to see as well, Mike. Uh, T1 takes the Luna. So that should be our pause one for Gabby. I say that, but we used to have pause for Luna. <laughs> so I guess for T1, there is that flux with the Gyro Copper and Luna on the support. Could be a possibility. Yeah. I think for their Sanki's sake, Luna safe lane for Gabby. Very stable hero. And again, you're laning against Tidehunter. Now, mind you, we have seen Tidehunter is bully out. So, uh, Luna, her range isn't the biggest, so you can run up, use Anchor Smash, use the Gush, try to be aggressive. With a Marana on hand, I don't see that lining up too much, but you can try to still force the issue on Gabby. So we'll see how much more Gabby can get out. With an Ogre Magi, though, you have one hero that can toss his body forward, take the attention away. And again, just buff up Luna to farm. Stacks are gonna be really important for T1. And I think that's where they're really going to have to build up for Gabby to clear out. Keen to see what the Cuckoo Hero is. Like, it this hasn't shifted too far from what T1 tends to run, except for the Gyrocopter, I suppose. So I'm keen to see what Cuckoo does want in his offlane options. Like, Beastmaster is still around if it's not going to be banned out by T1 themselves. YG does have the first pick in this last phase. They could steal it away if they want, but they're kind of looking for their own safe lane. So T1 has a lot of room. For the cuckoo here to close out here yeah they certainly do like to see the doom ban out as well from yg i mean j just in case t1 wanted to go back to that doom because you know we, we know how great carl is on that hero you, it's almost a guaranteed win if you give him that doom so rather just not have that situation going for you so t1 they're gonna have a bit of a heavier think about this this final ban out before we can continue like you said pause ones right now the only thing really to ban here against yg I suppose you could run Pos 1 Ember if you really wanted to, but I think Young PH enjoys the Ember a bit too much to, to give it away, and Pos 1 Ember, not the most guaranteed kind of carry to have either. Just very, very reliant on being able to outplay and kind of just outfarm as well, but it's just very challenging on the Ember Spirit in that Pos 1 role. Still YG. Final pickup. Assumedly a carry to come. They know they should be up against the Luna. But then, you know, like you mentioned, there is still that flex there with the gyrocopter. You don't actually know who's pos one yet. Any pos ones here for, for YG stand out to you, John? Hmm. I would have said something like a TA would have been pretty all right. Uh, in, at least in laning, you don't, you don't mind. You get tied TA. Got a lot of physical output with the Ember now kind of leading physical as well. When it changes to Sleight of Fist, but that was banned out. You could maybe... No illusion heroes as well. Like it's a bit tough. No terror blade up against Luna. Banned out. So Ooh. they do get the void instead. This was one option in my mind, because we have seen Kish play this. It's just that you don't have the best combinations. You have what? Three melee cores playing into Chrono. You do have a lot of disabled with Ravage. You have Static Storm to apply after Chrono. You have the Ravage after Chrono if you want. So you have a lot of team fight control in YG. All of that is kind of held back by cooldowns. Whereas for T1, their only real big cooldown is really Exorcism. You could argue Eclipse. You don't really want the Luna to show up with Eclipse early on anyway. So I think this might be a bit of a risk for YG. I feel like damage is going to be lacking a bit in the Chrono, at least in the early stage. And you're going to have to get a lot of items on the Void to get that damage going. Uh, Amber can at least stand back, maybe play with Sleight of Fists on the Chrono. But at, his damage also ramps up on Sleight of Fists later on right you need items for those right clicks to be beefy and you really want your level 25 for the sleight of his charges to really have that output so i'm i'm not sure how well this will go in the early to mid game i think t1 might be able to punish and go with the dk to close out so that could be our carl hero could be cuckoo on the offlane will be cuckoo carl will take that mid dp and we will have the gabby luna so nothing too insane beyond the gyrocopter 4 that they have used to great effect against motivate trust not going to try the Luna 4, which would have been a, a throwback, because I remember a time we were seeing that everywhere. Yeah. Overall, with a draft, Mike, I think... Do you have a way to run it on YG? We have seen Kish's Faces Void really pop off. I think the 
one thing that makes this tough is, again, just damage in Chrono doesn't feel amazing. Like, you're going to be popping multiple ults. At least Static Storm feels necessary to kind of overlay with Chrono to get some more damage or at least get the follow-up control. Ravage as well, which are long cooldowns. T1 doesn't have those long cooldowns. They can just run and gun a little bit more. They can be a lot more aggressive. Their Gyrocopter support if they want to be. And pressure early towers with DP DK. They can take these objectives really fast on T1's end. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of my concern here for YGs. I look at the draft that they've got here and it doesn't... It doesn't feel like they're going to be able to keep up with the farm for one. Because you are Luna vs. Void, pause one matchup. We've talked about this so many times, but Void does need some kind of farming item, which was usually the Maelstrom. But I suppose being a new patch, maybe they go more of a fighting build. Like maybe we see like a Diffusal Blade come out or something like that. But when you go against a really fast pushing lineup that T1 has, and a carry like Luna who can flash farm so much faster, it's going to be a very interesting match here for YG. I think we're both kind of leaning towards the T1 draft here, John. It, it does feel like that based on what you were saying. It still could go either way, but I think if T1 execute a draft like this as they usually do, I, I think it's going to be a very hard game for YG. Yeah, it definitely will be. YG has to execute near perfectly, right? Like you have to play with good Chronos, you have to play with good Ravages, you have to ensure your Disruptor is not caught out first. I think there's actually a lot of pressure on Zarin to figure out his positioning <laughs> to work out <laughs> why you lie. No, no, he's, he's, why he's he asked for the pause? Well, he's asking for young PH. What, what's happened here? Well, what's young PH lying about, I wonder? Cuckoo's disconnected now, so we'll never know. Amazing. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe saying uh, young PH is lying about have fun? I don't know. I don't know. Baited. All right. All right, guys. Love to see the internet connection issues. I'm like, it's not Southeast Asia without these disconnects, you know? It's not the same. Yeah, absolutely not, John. Should have some reconnection very, very soon. Suppose we'll, we'll get us, we'll get our pause chat started really early, John. How have you had Merienda today? <laughs> I have. Um, my family came back. They left me alone in the morning, as you know. I ran out for a package because no one else was at home. What'd they did that? order some tacos, tacos wow. and some nachos. That was really nice, uh, nice, soft, but you know, like a soft shell taco. But it's been, I don't know if it's fried or baked, but it's slightly crispy. So it's really nice, Mike. I had a great time. Nice. I'm, I'm all set. What did you have, Mike? Did you have anything good today? I, ha I had some Vietnamese today, actually, John. I, uh, the, the wife oh. ended up cooking it. Yeah, a bit of tomato rice, a bit of a. Uh, I think she made like a, a lamb chop. Uh, some Vietnamese style Ooh. lamb chop, which, which was interesting. And me personally, I'm not, I haven't been too big on meat recently, John. So I just went for the, uh, the eggs on top, put a bit mm. of the, uh, the soy sauce mix going. I don't know, soy sauce and vinegar and fish sauce and whatever else. It's pretty damn good, John. Very enjoyable. Thank you for asking. Fascinating, right? Not much into meat? Huh. Well, look, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm one of those guys where like, I'll eat meat if it's like super high quality. But, and I know it sounds terrible to say that. I just don't feel like meat if it's not like... You know what it is, John? I, I have problems with textures of meat. Like, I don't, I don't like... <laughs> There's no way to say this without sounding inappropriate, so I'm probably going to stop here, but... I, I just don't like the texture of, like, of meat these days. Okay. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe the meat's not tender enough or i don't know with you mike you you are right the more i go on with these lines it's uh there's no way getting very no, there's, there's no, no way, way to we, talk about there's this there's no way we do this no <laughs> uh, anyway hope so, yeah, you I'm... find some meat to enjoy mike i hope so 30 seconds to <laughs> so do i john thank you ah still t1 yg back to the game john 25 seconds left till we see these bounty runes spawn up looks like cuckoo is thinking about trying to intercept and intervene here with yg not really sure he gets away with it though, considering you do have skill laid there on the Marana with arrow ready. So it could be a bit of a, a, a dangerous attempt for Cuckoo to try and go for this. Still posturing. Skill laid is going to show himself, however, and Cuckoo, zigzagging his way over, is going to go for the Dragon Tail and does get away with it. And they got three for one. Zorain, he actually went down south to, to try and secure another. They do get away with it, but. Well, they let Cuckoo get the one towards the north and. It did feel like they had a decent setup for a nice arrow, but they just didn't have the bodies for it. No, yeah, they missed out on an opportunity. A great start for T1. I'll take a look at that top lane while we've got the time, Mike. Zephyr and Cuckoo 
on that Gyrocopter and DK. They're going to be up against Zarin and Kish on the Faces Void and Disruptor. There is a lot of aggression that can come out from T1 just by virtue of having the Gyrocopter. You can already see Zephyr gets the home missile, trades hit with Zarin. He's already winning the right click trade. Zarin has to expend a lot of mana on the turn to strike. It's uh, not the longest cooldown, but we have seen Disruptors eat through what? Six, five tangos in the lane. Uh, six, five mangoes just to keep that turn to strike harassment in the first two levels. Gonna hurt his economy compared to Zephyr, who doesn't really care much. Like, yeah. Even with his right clicks, he feels a lot better with his animation and swings that you can lay onto Zarin a lot more. Cuckoo's very hard to zone out as well. Granted, it's a it's a DK versus Void lane, so on paper it's very static unless Kish gets some bashes off. But it does feel like you're still going to find your farm here on Cuckoo. So it's a matter of just working the lane as best as you can on both sides and let the supports kind of twack each other like this. Yeah. Zorane's going to cop a homing missile. Nobody going to take care of that. Zephyr getting away with quite a bit here in the support gyrocopter this far. Of course, over in the mid lane, Carl and Young PH going at it. Young PH for now ahead in terms of CS, and I suppose the matchup is decent for him. Though I would imagine, John, as the, as the levels go up, even with those flame guard changes, it does feel like Carl should eventually just take over the lane, or at least get to a point where he can just harass Young PH up. Do, do you agree with that sentiment, or do you think it kind of goes the other way? I think it's a 50-50. I think with the flame guard standing for as long as it does now, it feels a lot easier for Young PH to still secure farm. You lose out in the region trade. We're You're finding out right now, John. Young yeah, Young PH may have gone a bit too far and he's going to pay for it. First blood will come out. That's kind of what I was worried about, John. Because at the end of the day, you're sitting there, you're trying to contest CS, but Carl's going to just spirit siphon you to death eventually. And again, with, even with the flame guard changes, I don't think it's enough yet. I think that's one area where the flame guard changes hurts the Ember more. Because uh, you might actually prefer to just lose your shield instead of just giving Carl off that damage and sustain and you know just protecting yourself uh, not tanking through a lot of that lane damage Carl already having a great start in this lane rune control maybe is a little bit more important for young PH they do have the arrow down the line so there's some good potential for rotations from Marana not as much on T1 with an Ogre Magi and Gyro so I think that's where YG is going to have to focus maybe come in by the four six minute mark make young PH's lane a lot easier secure him rune and Look for that kill. Uh, Young PH is going to be careful. I mean, he's getting aggressive, but Carl does have another Siphon available. I think Carl was just baiting a little bit there against Young PH, and well, still the Ember going to be able to get another Water Rune for himself, so I suppose the damage that was dealt is kind of a, a mute point now against this Ember. So he is going to get a bit of a reset going with this bottle. And Carl needs to be very careful because there is a rotation in from Skill Lay. Arrow is not going to land, though, Carl. He had a very nice scan going on that Marana. Sensing something was awry in this mid lane, and he will get away with his life intact. Yeah, just great wards dropped early on by T1, knowing that Marana would look for that time to rotate. Saw the movement in, kept the scan just to ensure that he wasn't being tracked or was being tracked. He managed to dodge out. Arrow does land onto Whitemon, but this bot lane that we haven't really talked about, Mike, is very stable. Again, AT can't do too much to stop Aluna. You'd really have to run up, use the anchor smash. Luna's range isn't that great. But you don't really have any follow through from the Marana. No, it's, it's a very passive lane because Marana doesn't have setup, so you're not going to be looking for kills. You're not going to be looking for the greatest zoning. And for Gabby, that's all he wants. He's not farming as great as, say, maybe his own off lane, but he's doing a lot better than Faces Void, and that's a Luna. It's going to flash farm a lot faster down the line as well. Well, that's exactly right. Like, you're eventually just going to go into the jungle, and you're going to be able to catch up very easily. And even then, like DKDP, they can just carry the game on their own if they have to and buy enough time for this Luna. Which is where it goes back to the, the drafting here for YG, is maybe they weren't expecting a full-on push lineup to be available here for T1, but that's kind of what we've got in our hands. And I suppose the one saving grace right now for YG is the fact that you've got this tied. AT's doing a great job of just being able to farm up and get that CS. I told that Thorcus top lane, Zephyr in big trouble, does pop a salve, but is not going to be able to survive. Zorain able to secure the kill on the Disruptor, and just barely as well. Yep, yeah. managed to waste some of that economy on T1 as well, using that resource in the salve. So you're feeling a lot better here on YG. You're still not doing much to stop Cuckoo, and Cuckoo's done a great job of stopping Kish. And that's where maybe that difference lies. You lose your support, sure, but you've done enough to make this a tough lane for the face is void and to minimize the impact of that disruptor that it's not going to feel great for Kish to catch up on farm. 
Void just... In fact, the jungle changes make it worse for Void to catch up in the jungle. He just doesn't clear it fast enough. He's very vulnerable without items and clearing out these big camps. Young BH, he's in big trouble again, John. Homing missile, gonna follow him down with Carl and the siphons out. The Ember not looking to survive through this one as they had the level 6 earlier on on Carl. No remnant away from Young PH as he is still level 5. You might not get much value out of the exorcism in terms of dealing damage to the uh, the tier 1 mid tower, but hell, who cares? Now you're going to be two levels ahead of the enemy mid laner, and you're still going to get a bit of damage off. Yeah, just great movement out from T1. We talked about the support rotations. It feels a lot stronger from YG with Murana, but you still show up, you still have good stuns with an Ogre Magi on Gyro, and you just find that opportunity. The level disparity for a young PH is making this lane nearly unplayable. Level 5 up against Carl with level 7. Without the remnants, you can't even stand here. Like, Whitemon and Zephyr knows that if they see any hero come up, they're likely dead. Young PH is gonna show up. Remember, he is only level 5 right now, and the Fire Blast is going to come out. They knew he was coming, so Whitemon waited in the fog as Ravage is going to be thrown out. AT needs to salvage this situation. They might be able to pick up Whitemon here on this Ogre. Arrow's going to connect, they'll get him. But you saw the panic in YG just there, trying to rotate in time to get that Ravage off. Props to AT, though, he does make it in time. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was a complete bait play, because it felt like if it was, they would have forced the TP in early while they were under tower range, so they could maybe get more damage, look for a bigger counter kill on the DP. That does save Young PH's life, but in the end, that's a ravage for a support, a pause 5 ogre, not the biggest kill to take, and that still frees up the side lanes. You're having a really great time for Gabby Don Bot, you're having an excellent time for Cuckoo Top, and that push potential outside of the DP is still there with the DK. He's pressuring that top tier 1, not much defense you can do from YG, especially knowing that Ravage is down. You don't really have many options left to stop this. Yeah. I mean, even top lane right now being forced in here by Cuckoo. So both just two lanes being uh, being kind of harassed here by T1. And they're going to have to address one of them. They're going to try and go on to Cuckoo here on that Dragon Knight as Kish is still around. But now the stun comes out. Kish, where's the reaction timing? Did he have no time warp? Maybe that was the case, as Time Walk was only level 1, but that's your pause 1 void you end up losing here for YG. And we saw an early TP out from <laughs> Delay. He headed down in the tree line. I think they were looking for the counterplay with a glimpse back. The arrow never came out. They managed to get the angle on T1. And it's just such a rough void game. Down bot though, AT. Yeah, AT gonna be forced down here by Carl as they have the Exorcism once again and AT. At least hand the high five over. So he knows he was going to die. Nice rotation in from Carl, and they might just be able to go through the bot tier one now. Like, which one do you defend if you're YG? Do you want to deal with the top? Do you want to deal with the bot? Looks like the answer of YG is pressuring mid, but their own lineup doesn't have the push potential. So they can't really fully commit. It looks like they might just lose both towers. Bot falls quite fast. T1 having this really strong start for Gabby. Top of the CS board, top of net worth by a huge margin. Almost two times more than Faces Void. That that is definitely bad news at this point. Like, I don't see a Void closing that gap quickly. It just doesn't flash farm. No Mask of Madness up at all for Kish. The jungle it's already being invaded by White Monster. It's not a smooth process either. They're just tracking and keeping the information up as to what YG wants to do. White Monster. Gonna get Glimpse back here, so YG might be able to pick themselves up another support kill, but Cuckoo is gonna come in to defend his ogre friend. Kishin's all rain, not going to be willing to try and hang around and deal with this Dragon Knight. Cuckoo even just going to keep moving in after this Void, just try to harass him out of the lane and do not allow that CS to occur here for the Faces Void. Skish, still running, is now going to cop a stun as White Mon might make it in range to get the Fire Blast off. Surely they haven't got enough damage though. Though Kish does not have Time Warp. Uh, He's dying to Ignite. Uh, he will Time Walk away. He's still dying of the Dragon Poison, but he will make it. Just barely. Oh, it's a very tough time here for YG jump. Very, very tough indeed. Oh, it, it's terrible. Like, they're just completely zoned out. They don't have three lanes to work on. They don't have the jungle anymore. But the objectives they take. And uh, Kish is still playing tag with Cuckoo. Yeah, it's all rain. He's the one who's actually been caught out as Whitemon will continue to chase him down, but does not have the mana for the Ignite. It was only like two or three mana off. Nevertheless, skill A even showing up here, trying to go on to Zephyr. Young BH is going to show up with the chains into the arrow, and that'll be a nice pickup. YG, able to find something for their time. 
Okay, it's not the greatest kill in the world, but it is something. You have to worry about the item timings that you are getting out on your other cores while sacrificing your supports here. T1 has the blink up on Cuckoo. Radiant this is a 10 and a half minute blink with double bracer power treads. Insane farm from our off lane DK. 5k net worth, way ahead of AT, way ahead of Kish and Young PH on the Tide and Ember. And now you have to deal with that initiation from T1. They have so much to play with. For YG, they've got Chrono, they've got Ravage. What's the combination you're looking for? They will go for the smoke play, maybe looking for a single Chrono. They've got the Mask of Madness on Kish. His damage can be up there. They just need to find a target. Oh, Kish. Gonna move in with that Chrono. Only level 6, by the way, on this Void, but he, I guess he just feels the need to get something done for the team. Even with this Mask of Madness, they might have enough damage to get through somebody's HP pool, but the only person they see right now is Whitemon. Pings are out, so they might try to make the play onto the Ogre, but that's not who you want. Five heroes in mid lane, but it's amounting to absolutely nada. Just nothing coming out of this. Just a great read coming out from T1. They just position themselves elsewhere. They know something's awry. They know Void hit level six in the top lane because Cuckoo is playing tag for so long. And they know that's the timing they want on YG, where their team fight's really strong with Ravage, with Chrono on top of it. Chain stun's really big. Even then, I, I just worry about the damage output right now on YG. They just don't have damage. Their faces Void but just the Mask of Madness might be enough in the Chronos time. But your Ember is not doing much, and speaking of that Ember... Yeah, Silence is out in time. Carl catching out Young PH. The Remnant, though, is going to be there, but the right-click follow-up and the homing missile is still chasing him down. It won't be enough, though. Young PH, he's going to be all right. Still just sitting at level 7, however. I mean, you might be able to survive these little engagements, but it feels like they can't even think about putting up a fight right now. So T1, they're going to go for a very early Roshan timing. And with the double damage on Gabby, you are easily going to be able to get away with this. Oh yeah, I mean, you've got the output here. Not going to take long. Love to see that the DD still spawn around the time you want to go Roche Mike, you know? Of course. Still lined up there, we'll see if it holds up in Roche number 2 if we get to that point. YG. And they have the team fight for that area, they didn't have vision. They didn't have wards, they couldn't get themselves out there in time. If they just got a good Ravage Chrono. They might have been able to snatch that Aegis for themselves. Still, they will go for the smoke play afterwards. It's only the first rush, so it's only the Aegis on Gabby, and he does he does have the value point in the clips. They want to use these team fight spells. There's so much pressure in YG to keep forcing this movement out just to use those spells. Yeah, but who are they gonna find? I mean, there there is a ward in the triangle right now, so they know exactly where Gabby is, and he is farming a pretty big stack. They're gonna try and jump in now. Young BH was there with the chains out, but they amount to nothing. And T1, they are just reading them like a book. I mean, it's... There's just no angle for YG to, to try and move Radiant's in. Middle tower. Not while this T1 yeah. mid tower still stands. So they can try to focus it down and try to force a fight here with Kish and the Chrono. But you see how careful T1 are. They understand exactly what YG's trying to set up and they are not allowing that opening. They had this beautiful ward near the lane in the tree line. So they spot out some of that smoke. Just lets them get in position. They'll commit onto White Mon. They'll have to get something, John. They've spent so much time here, but Cuckoo's gonna jump in. He's got the Mirana. Ravage is there though, AT. Gonna get a one for one so far, but Kish is already gone. Oh no Chrono even being thrown out here by our Void. Because they even found the Ember. That'll be another. AT, he's gonna try and TP on and he will barely make it. But is it really even worth making it at this point, John? I mean, this game one is so one sided. As Carl's just moving in for more now. Onto AT they go. The Tide is going to survive for now, so instead they'll go after Zorain. And this is Carl on his own, just diving T2 towers. The Glimpse is going to be there. Maybe they'll be able to punish this Death Prophet and find themselves an opening as Arrow is not going to land. So he can try to run with the Static Storm being dropped. And now Kish does move in. They almost have the kill and they will get it. Carl getting a bit too greedy, oh, but now no. Cuckoo's jumped in again and they've got Kish. Oh, they've got the Void another time. It's just terrible news. Even with the death proper kill, it's just not good news. Oh, no. It really isn't. Like, they, they, they can't do anything. They do manage to find Zephyr on his side. AT's prolonging this, but to no extent. Young PH, he's got three remnants, but does he have the time to get it off? Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Skill late. He's got no leap charges for another five seconds, John, so he'll try to juke them out the old-fashioned way, but Cuckoo <laughs> is right all over it. Does get another. 
<laughs> was that just a full team wipe, John? I, I, I lost count. Almost. Um, uh, almost uh, there. But respawns are so short, I'm not even sure. It's, it's rough for YG, Mike. I mean, 12 to 6 isn't bad, but you have a 12k net worth advantage on T1 as well. I don't think we've ever seen that, where you have this okay kill lead, but an insane net worth lead. Like, this is massive. 13k at 16 minutes in. Oh, that's we have nearly seen. unplayable. We, I mean, we have, it, but usually with way more kills, right? Like, not just 12 to 6. It's like a lot more. And T1's just so efficient on the map. They've had really strong lanes. The, this is the point where it feels like for YG, finding that open, finding that catch-up is near... It's very difficult, right? You're almost banking on T1 to make a mistake. Her high ground hold is good, though. We'll see if YG finds an angle here. Yeah, they're going to have to try. I mean, they've got that chrono up, but they haven't been able to land it once so far this game one. It's T1. They're just speedrunning this game. They are not interested in dragging this out whatsoever. As the tier 3 tower is just about to fall, Gabby will move back in. Still about a minute on that Aegis timing. As Chris now, he'll jump in. There's a three man chrono. He's going to try it for Carl as the Ravage is there to follow up. It's a great setup here from the side of YGs. They've got Carl down. They'll go after Zephyr 2. They'll find a second. But can they keep going? Gabby's now going to reset. But he wants to run back. Never mind. He's going to turn back around onto AT. Does at least get the Tidehunter down before he does need to retreat. But they're not retreating. It was all a fake back as they're going to fight another Zorain to go that'll be a double for Gabby T3 tower down can we make it a triple I think we can that'll be three kills to go the way of T1 but YG they're not going to give up yet two buybacks being committed they'll move back oh in but God. no yeah, young bitch. GH is gone there is just too many stuns available from T1 way too much nearly every single hero has a disable there's just nothing YG can do Especially since they already use Ravage, Static Storm, and Chrono. There's that great high ground world we were talking about is gone. Now, fortunately for them, Tier 2 still stand. T1 can't go for the Megas. They could try to force the end game, but being, you know, their numbers were down. They need a reset. Not going to go all the way. Th those cooldowns are massive. We talked about that weakness in draft point. It it's still a minute 20 until Chrono, minute 10 for Ravage. How do you hold any of your objectives until those spells are up? It doesn't feel like you can certainly doesn't. I mean, even with the Chrono, like, you got a couple kills out of that, but it didn't look too convincing when it was being done. But they did synergize very well with the Ravage Chrono. I'll give him that. T1, who have they spotted? Well, Kish is showing on the map right now, so Zephyr will start moving in with that homing missile. Stun is there from Cuckoo as well, and this will be just perma stun. My goodness, T1 just playing no games here in this game one. And can I just say, John, Cuckoo has been on fire on this Dragon Knight. Oh, yeah. He caught that 10 and a half minute blink with the double bracer power treads. He's been all over the map. He's been split pushing by himself, looking for opportunities to link up with his team. And T1's execution, as you said, Mike, it's flawless. Like, it, it's almost perfect coming out from them. YG just has no openings. They've gone for multiple sm smoke plays. T1 had some really good boards spotting out some of those smokes and always managed to get themselves in a good position. They've only been losing mainly their supports. We did see Carl fall in that last high ground siege. They didn't get enough on YG's end to play off the back. And now with all the tier twos gone, high grounds opened up. Chrono Ravage will be up. So maybe they find that angle. No Aegis on Gabby, but he does have the BKB. It can be a bit hard to still find that same play with a spell immunity on the Luna. Let's see what they can get done here, John. Looks like there is going to be a retreat from T1, but they're just going to hold the triangle for now. No need to rush. I mean, you've got a 20k net worth advantage here for T1 prior to the 20 minute mark. YG, however, they feel the need to rush. Smoke is broken, though. They know they're right behind as Whitemon will allow that his team to have that information. And YG, again, they're just not going to find an opening. Maybe Cuckoo. But he seems just a bit too tanky right now on that DK to deal with. Unless you have the whole team surrounding him, that is. And it just seems like YG want to take this triangle back, but again, they're just not doing it in a convincing fashion. Maybe now. Chains out. White Mon, he'll cop the arrow, but again, they're running. Cuckoo. Oh, He's no. right in. No hesitation. They've already got Kish down. Ravage or not, they just delete the faces void as now AT's in trouble. He will try to delay this as much as possible. In the meantime, White Mon finally dies, and Carl does jump in for the Chrono, but where's the damage? He did no damage, John. 
GG. Yep. Uh, it, it was a tough game for YG. They w they went for the void pick. They're, they had no synergy. They had triple melee cores with a void. They had a Marana that could stand outside. They had Static Storm from Disruptor. When those ults were down, there's no way. And that was a great jump in from Cuckoo at the end. He found the void, gets the stun as the Ravage Static Storm was coming up. So the Chrono was never there to play with a mega combination of all your ults. And YG desperately needed to land all, all of those ults. I think for YG's end, it does feel like maybe a bit of a outdraft, I want to say, because it, it's so hard to run the void with Ember and Tide. Like, you just don't have damage in the Chrono unless yep. you get the Ravage, unless you get the Static Storm as well. But then you're all playing around three ults all at once, not even, like, staggered. We had to see the, Cro the Ravage in Chrono, the Static Storm in Chrono, just because there was no DPS in that Chrono. And I think you can't afford to pigeonhole yourself into that one play style here when you're playing against, like, T1. You have to be ready to adapt. You have to, re to be ready to be a bit aggressive because T1 has been looking to play a lot faster now in the past few past few days here, Mike. And they certainly did a great job of a game one, John, finishing in about 20 minutes uh, for game one. So there you go. That's fast. Uh, still, we are going to move on to game number two after a very short 10-minute break. Till then, it is MLP Dota and John X Fire, and we'll see you all again very, very soon.